hope the switch of camera off is going to be recorded. There we go. Ken just started the record. So if you're at all nervous about who's seeing you, uh, turn, turn your camera off. Penny has been an entrepreneur since her 20s. Uh, she does something called uh, production in mass displays. Penny, if I say that to most people, most people have no idea. So I always describe you as the mass choreographer for large events. And you might have seen her in some of the things that she's done and things like the Sydney Olympics, or even if you remember the 2010 South African Cricket Cup, that massive opening display that you see, that's Penny. She does a lot more than that. She has multiple businesses with her husband. Hannah's always been on the entrepreneurial line. And here's the interesting part. She's always spoken, her and Ken have always told me that one day we'll be living on the island. And now it is so frustrating for me to chat to these guys in the afternoon. Ken's got a pair of, I don't think Ken owns pants anymore. He's walking around in his, in his board shorts or his speedo. And Penny's always in a bikini. They always seem to have a glass of wine in their hands. And yet they're running a very successful business from the island of Mauritius. So Penny, if I had to ask you, that sounds very much like a dream life to me. Talk to us a little bit about the things that today will lead us into that situation where we can have some financial freedom. Oh, thanks so much, Andre, and welcome everybody. It's so good to have you with us. And we're going to be handling two topics today. As you saw, we're going to be talking about reducing your debt um, and adding to your income. And uh, the, the biggest series that we're going to be doing at the end of July, on the 31st of July, for if you feel that this is adding value and you would like to do the four hour more complete workshop, um, we're going to be dealing with so many different elements and all these elements actually interrelate. They're all like pieces of the jigsaw, if you like, and we need to kind of piece them all together. And the one relates to the other. So today it might seem a little bit disjointed, um, but uh, definitely, definitely, um, we're going to give you as much information and helpful tips that I hope uh, if you've got some stressful situations in and around debt at the moment, it's going to help uh, relieve you and maybe you're going to sleep a little bit better tonight. That's really what we want to do. So firstly, what is debt? So Google says a sum of money that is owed or due. That is what debt is. So my question to you this morning is, are you currently in debt? Yes or no? Now, I know that there's good debt and there's bad debt, um, but today we're probably going to be focused more on bad debt or the, the extent to which you're overburdened with debt. So do you know how much debt you're actually in? And then I also want to say, stay calm because there are solutions. It doesn't help for you to get completely emotional, um, break down in tears, et cetera, uh, take it out on your dog and your cat. Um, that doesn't help. This is all about being analytic. This is all about the facts and the figures and um, figuring out what you need to do. And from my personal experience, I've been in massive debt where I've literally owed millions. Um, and I've been completely, as we are now, completely out of debt other than the car. Um, and I can honestly tell you, it is a much better feeling to go to sleep at night, not being in debt. And in fact, this is biblical and whatever religion you um, aspire to or belong to, um, you probably have so much information in and around this subject of money. Um, and unfortunately, the system that we live in is geared towards getting you into debt. And debt is really like a modern type of slavery. So I want to invite you today to become freedom warriors <laughs> and let's get out of debt. And, you know, once you're out of debt, you just have this peace of mind. Um, I think it's so good for your integrity and your self-respect just to know that you don't owe anybody anything. Um, you also get rid of these very, very annoying calls, you know, like is this Penelope and Jones, uh, Jonas? Um, I just want to talk to you about the money that you owe. Um, okay, so we don't we don't want those calls at like whatever times of the day and night, etc. Also, you need to know what your credit score is and to make sure that it's clear because one day is one day you want to buy a property or um, a new car or whatever. Um, and you want to avoid judgments and protect your assets. You don't want the sheriff standing on your front uh, door, knocking on your front door and uh, about to take all of all that you own. And you want to create a legacy. If you've got a massive debt and you pass away, God forbid, um, with that debt, that's going to carry on to your, your next generation, et cetera. Now, if you've got into debt with um, and with no intention of paying for something, then that, that that's illegal and that's painting you as a criminal. And I know that you're not that. Um, so 
I think we all are good people here. We all have integrity and we want to make sure that our debt is controlled because uncontrolled debt is definitely an evil. So on that subject, never, ever, ever sign something that you don't understand and don't sign a personal surety. Um, you have every right to take a document that you're not sure about and have it checked out. And anyway, so um, I, I don't have time to go into all the nits, nitty gritties, but just to say that if you've got bad debt, let's now look at what do you need to do. So you've got debt, it's burdening you down. What do you need to do? The first thing is you have to get organized. This is war. <laughs> get the real picture. Uh, the millennials nowadays, is so, they're so computer literate and you know with their gadgets and everything, you've got to know what your GPS is. That's what you've got to know. Where are you? Um, so, you know, old school, um, you know, if you're old school like me, I just got a couple of books and I started writing down every single debt and leave nothing out, even personal debts um, that, you know, you loan some money from your mother-in-law or whatever. Don't respond to any request um, over the phone. Always ask for an email, ask for um, the, the subject of the, of the debt to be sent to you in writing so that you can verify all the facts. This is very important. Don't fall a uh, victim to people that are harassing you on the phone. Um, and it's, there are some key factors that you must know, and this you need to write down. Number one, you need to know the date of the debt. Um, and how long it's been outstanding for. There is a legal term called prescription um, in SA law. And if you have a debt that's older than three years, so now we're in 2021, let's go back 2017 as a ballpark, any debt that is older than 2017 would actually be prescribed as long as you have not paid a cent towards that debt in the last three years. Okay, so this is very important. And what they will normally pressure you to do, the people that have maybe bought uh, the book, uh, they've bought the debt, um, and they are harassing you to pay just something, anything, 100 Rand, 500 Rand on that debt, because as soon as you do that, you have now reactivated this old debt, and now it is active. But if it is older than three years, it is prescribed, and you can quite uh, legally say to the person on the phone, this is a prescribed debt, and it is no longer due. I promise you the phone will go down very quickly. Then you also need to know whose name is on the debt. Is it in your personal name? Is it uh, a member of your family? Um, it, is it in the business name? Uh, is, is it in a friend's name or a partner's name, et cetera? Um, because uh, there too lies a story. You know, um, once I had a debt and they actually got the name wrong um, and then it was completely wiped out. Um, so what is the interest rate? You need to know what is the interest rate. Um, some debts have higher interest rates than others. And what are the penalties involved with that debt? And what is the settlement amount? And you can often negotiate that and we'll come back to that. Then you also need to check your credit score. This is really important. And there are a couple of places that you can do this. Very, very popular at the moment in South Africa is Experian, E-X-P-E-R-I-A-N, um, and uh, TransUnion, CompuScan, and XDS. Um, one of the most popular that, a website that's been used at the moment is called Clear Score, one word, Clear Score, and that is linked to Experian, and they give you a credit report for free. So that's a great way to establish what, it, what your credit uh, name is looking like, and you may well find one or two debts that perhaps you have forgotten about, um, and there was possibly a judgment taken or something that's sitting on your name, and you definitely need to deal with that. Then what you're going to do is once you've got this list, um, however long it may be, don't have a heart attack, it's all doable, um, you need to prioritize urgent to less urgent. Now, if you've taken money, uh, taken out loans with loan sharks, whatever, um, they're probably going to come and break your leg if you don't pay. So that's probably very, very urgent. Um, credit cards also tend to be a very urgent debt because they really harass you and the interest rate is so high. Um, so once you know your GPS, then what I recommend is that you need expert advice. If you broke your leg today, my question to you would be, would you try and fix it yourself? Would you ask your husband or your partner to fix it for you? No, the answer is no. You would go to a doctor, you would go to someone who really knows what they're doing. And it's the same here. You really need good advice and it actually is going to cost you money if you have the wrong advice. 
So it really pays you to go to a proper professional financial advisor or to a lawyer, have the contract uh, checked out, um, did they follow all the correct processes, et cetera, with you, um, so that you can understand exactly what you're in for and what the possible strategy may be. So speak to someone who is qualified and objective, probably not your brother-in-law. Um, and then I just want to talk here about the value of debt counselors. So there is a debt review process that's available to you in South African law. Um, they cannot any longer put you into jail for debt. Um, but And they've given us an opportunity with the debt review process so that you can, if this is now when you're really overburdened with debt, you know, it's just too much, you're not going to cope with it anytime soon, and your house is now in danger, your personal assets are now in danger, this will give you a protection. And what they do is they will sit with you and they'll bundle all your debts together, and they will actually get a, a, a court decree um, saying that you are under a debt review. Now, being under debt review is not a bad thing. Ken and I have done it at one stage. Um, it just means that you and your assets are com uh, protected completely from your creditors um, so that you've got a time now to actually pay off um, all of these amounts according to the strategy which they will give you. And also, um, one of the things that you must remember, though, is that you may not take out new credit during this time. And then once you've actually uh, accomplished everything that you need to do, um, then you can actually reinstate yourself um, as credit worthy. So you've, you've kind of got your GPS and um, you've figured out the best strategies for you. Now you can actually put a plan together. So this, this is critical. You need to write down exactly what you're going to do. It's a little bit like getting directions now to your destination. So let's just say your destination is the debt-free aisle, if you like. Um, and you need to put a timing to this. I mean, how long do you want to be in debt? Is this going to be something that you can clock quickly in three to four months? Is it a six-month program? Is it a one-year program? Is it two years? Is it five years? It doesn't matter. It's never too late. Um, and there will be some debts that you can complete very quickly and others that are going to take much, much longer. But remember to put the timelines in there, because what I found is I found that so encouraging to actually see that there was going to be light at the end of the tunnel and there was going to be a day when Ken and I would celebrate being out of debt. There are three main strategies. And the first one is you pay the highest interest debt first. Um, this makes a lot of financial sense. Um, because that's going to save you money in the long run. The other way is to pay the smaller ones um, quickly, which is very, very motivating because now you, you owe this guy 200 rand or 500 rand there or 1,000 rand there. And it's really great and satisfying to tick those off very, very quickly and you feel like a superstar. Okay. So my recommendation, though, is maybe a balance of the first two. So you know, a little bit of balance of the high interest ones, but you're also looking at paying off some of the smaller ones and getting them out of the way quickly. I actually had a couple of columns in my book um, and I just kind of wrote, you know, what was the total outstanding, what I agreed to pay per month. Um, and then as I was ticking them off another column and just like done, crossed off, crossed off, crossed off. And obviously you can do that on your laptop also. So you're going to be able to pay your debts off in the following way. You can use a portion of your monthly income. And here I say a portion because the biggest mistake that you can make is now to send all of your money into the debt. So now what happens is you've got no money to live and you're going to have to go back into debt again in order to actually live and put food on the table for you and your family. So it's important that you understand, okay, I'm going to commit 1,000 Rand or 5,000 Rand or whatever it is, 10,000 Rand per month. Um, that's going to go towards my debt payments. The other thing, of course, is that if you're lucky enough that you've got savings still after a year or so of pandemic, you can dig into your savings. You can also sell assets. Um, you know, uh, you're not a tree. You can move. You know, maybe you, you're in a house. We were in a house that was way too big for us. We had, Andre will remember it well, we had eight bedrooms and, you know, three kitchens, I don't know, five bathrooms. 
it was not necessary. Um, we had ideas of, you know, running it as a self-catering as well, but we were very busy in our other careers, so it wasn't really um, viable. Um, and we sold that, and we moved and downsized into a smaller townhouse, which was very, very comfortable. In fact, it was so comfortable, we were going to stay there for two years. We ended up staying there for seven years. <laughs> it was fantastic. Um, and uh, we were able to sort out a lot of issues and a lot of debt by doing that. You can also negotiate lower settlements, especially if you can do a cash offer. Now, you didn't hear it from me, but you know, sometimes you can walk into a place and say, look, I've got 5,000 rands cash. That's it. That's all I have in the world. Can we settle this 10,000 rand um, outstanding debt and offer the person 5,000? Well, maybe they'll accept, maybe they won't, but sometimes they do. Um, so you can definitely do well if you're offering cash because that does give... Um, the, your, your person that you owe the money to, lots of advantages. You can also negotiate lower interest rates, and this is very important. Um, you have the right to negotiate these interest rates and stand up for yourself. Um, remember, we spoke about cancelling old debt that is more than three years old. Don't forget that. So definitely put your older debts to one side. And you can also offer trade exchanges, and may, there's many other solutions that you can do um, to pay off your debt quicker. Very, very important to keep in touch with your creditors. You know, often you see on that contract this funny Latin term, domicilium, domicilium. That means your address. You want to make sure that they know what your real address is. And actually, they probably do know what your real address is. But what happens is they send the summons or the letter of demand and then the summons and everything goes to your uh, official address that happens to be the domicilium on their contract. And they know you're not there, but it gives them an advantage because they can quickly go to court, they can take a summary judgment against you, then funnily enough, they know where you are because now they arrive at your real address um, and they're issuing a, a warrant of execution against your property, etc. So it's very important that anybody that you owe money to knows exactly what your address is um, and that you keep up to speed. Don't leave anything unattended to. Don't leave any envelopes unopened. Andre um, often says that. Make sure that you open every envelope and make sure that you understand um, what it is that you owe and what you need to do. And quite frankly, if you need to go to court, go to court. It's not such a big deal. I've been to court several times and you stand there and you plead and you say, this is what happened. There was the pandemic. There was this. I lost my job. This happened. That happened. Um, I can afford to pay 50 rand a month um, until such time as I get on my feet and then maybe I can settle more. And this is a critical point. You can pay a small amount per month uh, on your debts. And legally speaking, they can't really do anything because you actually are making an effort and you actually are paying something towards that debt and you're keeping in touch and you're keeping in communication. So that's very important. All right, so you've got your plan together and you know what you need to do and by when you need to do it. Then, of course, you need to act ACT, okay? If a great plan with no action is not going to help you at all. So you've got to start today. Keep track of all your payments and request receipts and demand updated statements. Very important. That's your right. If judgment was taken and you've managed to uh, eradicate that particular debt, make sure that you get a rescission of judgment. This is very important to clear your credit name going forward. Double check your credit score again. Um, sit with your bank manager, check your bank points, what's going on with your bank scores. And remember that your credit scores nowadays and your bank information is shared not only nationally, but it's also shared internationally. So it's very important that you have a clean bill of health. And of course, the most important thing is that you're going to be improving your income. And that's what we're going to talk about uh, in the next session after the very, very short debt, uh, short debt, short break. Um, and don't add new debt. OK, because here's the funny thing. As you've now solved um, your debt issue and you've cleared your name, now you are considered to be very, very credit worthy. So you are going to get all these silky romantic phone calls and um, uh, emails inviting you to take out more credit, et cetera. Um, be careful. Don't buy that new car. You don't have to keep up with the Joneses. I am a Jones. You know, don't worry about keeping up. <laughs> don't worry about what other people think. And guess what? They're not thinking about you. 
this is the reality. You know, you, you need to be um, happy with your personal plan and with your personal um, uh, processes and um, strategy and uh, your idea of what you're going to need to um, achieve in the future. Um, so be good, G-O-O-D, that's got out of debt. Be good and stay out of debt and be free. And with that, I'm going to hand over to Andre before we come back to talk about how we can increase income. So Andre, over to you just for a couple of minutes there. Wow, Penny, I'm actually quite breathless. <laughs> I can't believe you managed to get all of that through all of that in 15 minutes. If you're wondering what Penny's doing, she's discussed one item out of 10 different things that she offers on her course. And this was just the little taster in terms of debt. We've got to take about a two minute break. I'm just going to chat if you desperately need to have a little break or grab a glass of water. I don't think you've got time for coffee. Um, we're going to have a two minute break, in, but literally 60 seconds, 120 seconds. You know, Penny, debt, debt is one of those horrible things that can really bind you and, and become a terrible thing on, on, top of your, on top of your life. And the stress levels are enormous. And for those of you who think that, that everybody's got lots of money, I'm a professional speaker and normally I can make a lot of money. But last year I was effectively outlawed because I couldn't stand in front of large groups of money. So I pivoted and started multiple streams of income and managed to survive. But it's very down on you when suddenly your income starts going down and you start saying, I don't, I can't imagine how I can make additional money. So it's easy to say, pay off your debt, but I've got no money coming in. How do I sort out the debt? Well, there is another way. And that is to increase your income, or as we like to call it, to get a side hustle. And if I can quickly share this for you in 30 seconds. My daughter last year in December decided to do something to help the parents of the other kids at school. And what she did is she said, everyone was trying to sell jam and honey and making benches and doing all kinds of wonderful things. But none of them had a venue. So what she did is she negotiated a market at one of the local sports clubs. And within an hour or two, she'd sold up the entire event. 2,000 people came. She managed to get on national television. She got onto uh, one of the local radio stations. And then she ran six of them in a row. In the end of November and in December, she raised 150,000 rand. She is 17 years old. And so I get really excited. And I think to myself, there is no money. Guys, there is money. As Penny keeps reminding me, for every person who doesn't have money, there's another person who does. She's now in the trick, and I said to her this year, absolutely, Julia, no more markets, because it's a lot of work and a lot of stress. And so she said, fine. What I didn't know is that she started an Instagram account. She dug in my cupboard, took all, all the clothes out that I can't fit into anymore, sold them off as dad shirts, and that gave her another idea. And this is now what we're in June. And she averages between about seven and 10,000 rand a month on Instagram selling off second-hand clothes. There are a million ways to make more money. But one of the things we need to do is we need to get our mindset right, and we need to follow certain processes. And so what we're going to do for the next 15 minutes is Penny is going to speak to us a little bit about raising your income or gaining additional income, or if you want to call it, what I like to call it, is side hustles. Penny, you got your breath back. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Thank you, Andre. And like, what an awesome example, uh, Julia, is. That's fantastic. You're, when I think of myself in my teen years, um, I was uh, waitressing, I was modeling, I was um, you're, trying to do so many different things to make money. But unfortunately, I wasn't very savvy financially. And um, I think only in my 60s now, I'm kind of like getting it together. And this is why I really wanted to share this information. Um, you know, don't be like me, you know, rather get this together in your 20s. But having said that, I know we've got a lot of people with us that are in their 50s and their 60s. And my message to you is that it's not too late. It's not too late. Um, you, can, you can just put so many things uh, straight um, just by starting today. That's the important message that I want to leave with you. So increasing your income, this is such a popular topic. What is the definition of income? The Google says it's money received, especially on a regular basis for work or through investments. So today we're not gonna be talking much about investments and in our next free session that we're doing on the 17th of July, we are gonna be talking about reducing your tax. 
um, legally um, and increasing your investments. So definitely you want to tune in for that if you can. And obviously in our um, four hour workshop that we're doing on the 31st, we'll be covering all of these items in a lot more detail, supplying you with templates, et cetera, that you can use um, yourself in your every day and every week and every year situation. So in every situation, pandemic or not, there is opportunity. The good news is that you are in control and you are the driver of your car and uh, you have the power to choose to make more money. Don't believe the lie. The big lie is that it's okay for those guys to do well and it's okay for those guys to be wealthy, et cetera, but not me. That is the biggest lie that you can accept. So please, from today on, um, affirm every single day that I am in control of my money um, and I am in control of my financial future. Very important. And we strongly encourage you to have more than one income. This is very important. So multiple streams of income is really where it's at. And this has this has really helped myself and Ken on so many occasions. You know, sometimes Ken's business has been a bit low and then I've been, uh, I picked up a couple of TV ads, you know, so I had all that additional income. Um, you know, just recently, of course, in, in my business and show business uh, or TV ads or choreography, it's very, very difficult. Um, so we are focusing a lot more on uh, Ken and my business, the, the Intersafe business. Um, and within Intersafe itself, there's actually many different types of income. So how many income streams do you have right now? So just write them down. You've got your money from your job or money from your business. Um, maybe you've got money from some side hustle selling that you're doing on the side. Maybe you're doing some referral marketing online. Uh, maybe you've got a second job even. Uh, maybe you've got a second business as well. Um, and I think what's really exciting at the moment is because of the pandemic, it's actually forced uh, everyone to take online um, reality, the reality of online and online marketing and, and working online so much more seriously. And uh, there is a global market for your skills. So you, you may be uh, the most outstanding um, accountant or the most outstanding teacher, et cetera. You are not limited um, just to doing Zoom lessons, et cetera, with people in your city um, or people in your country, South Africa, or people on your continent, Africa. You can actually do business all over the world. And there are special um, skills marketplaces where you can sell your time and you can get paid in foreign currency, which is really great. Um, and I mean, you, you always make a nice little bit on the on the forex margin <laughs> when, when you're transferring money uh, left and right. So, so that is really fabulous to be able to learn, earn international currency as well. And just an example, there's a Korean teacher, he's very well known. Um, he's just an English teacher, but he has made millions um, and he's got millions of learners all over the world um, who subscribe to him because he's so skilled as a teacher and he has some unique techniques that he uses um, and is extremely popular. So I just want to encourage you to actually think uh, differently about where do you sell your skills and how do you sell your skills. It's not necessary nowadays to be limited. Uh, a good friend of ours um, and part of our team, in fact, is Devet Bosov, and he actually does business all over the world. Um, I think in the US and in China and in Australia, uh, in Mauritius, uh, in South Africa, etc. And he's quietly just stashing money all over the world. And I'm very, very proud of him. So if we talk about income, it's critical to understand the difference also, not just about making different incomes, but understanding the difference between profit, making a profit and making a loss. Um, and that brings me to the next subject, which is profit versus loss. So to create income, you need to earn more than the cost related to the earning. Now, if you think it's strange that I'm emphasizing this logical point, I, uh, especially when Ken met me, I was doing productions and I was doing shows where I was making no money. In fact, I was probably paying in money when we actually did the final analysis. And Ken was looking at this and saying, no, 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 no. We really need to think differently about how you price yourself. So you've got to understand what is your cost of your work. Now, if you're in a job situation, 
Um, normally, if you're going to a job, you have transport. If you're working from home, of course, it's slightly different. You've got transport, you've got image costs, you know, your hair's got to look great. You've got to have the right makeup. You've got to have the right clothing. Um, you probably got to update your technicals on a regular basis. Um, if you work in a full-time job, you probably need a maid at home. If you have children, you need childcare. Uh, if you have pets, you need pet care. Um, if you've got children that are at school and doing extra mural, mural activities, you probably need to hire a driver. Um, you probably have extra medical costs because uh, you are exposed to colds and flu or even worse, as we know, in the uh, in the work environment, you need money for your daily food and your daily coffees. Um, and of course, it's time, never mind the eight hours that you're actually working at your job, but it could be one to two hours in traffic to get to work and one to two hours getting back from work. So it's, it's very important always to understand what is your time worth. And I always suggest, um, and uh, in our four hour session, we'll go into a lot of detail in terms of working out what you are really worth per hour or per day, but just like a very rough ballpark was if you know that your lifestyle is costing you um, 50,000 Rand a month, for example, um, then you know that uh, if you divide that by 20, that's how much you need to bring in per day, for example. Um, and you can work that out. And if you break that down into another eight hours, then you can see what it is per hour. So you need to consider with every job opportunity or income opportunity, how much time is it taking? Um, and what are the costs that are related to that? And how much energy is it taking? And even how much danger is involved? Um, so in business, I just want to talk about what we call the GP percentage factor. This is really, really important to understand. And whether you're in business or not, I think this will really help you, especially with your side hustles. So this formula, you need to write it down. So the GP percentage formula is, and this is the uh, GP stands for gross profit, okay? Your gross profit. So this is all about making money, making income. You actually have to make a profit, not a loss for it to be an income. Otherwise it's a debt, not an income. Okay, so we all clear on this. So your GP divided by the sale amount times 100, which is to get the percentage, which is part of 100, will give you the GP percentage. So for example, let's just say you sold something, whatever it was, for 750 rands. Your cost of sale directly related to that was 250 rands. Whatever those costs might be, maybe it was printing, maybe it was this, maybe it was that, whatever it was. That means that your gross profit, we all agreed, is 500 rand. So to get to your GP percentage, it's 500 divided by 750 times 100, which equals 66.66%. Now, we often suggest that anything over 50% gross profit percentage is good, okay? And you'll be surprised sometimes when you do this analysis on some of the work that you are doing, sometimes that, that, that uh, GP percentage is so small um, that it's almost impossible for you to actually create proper income. So you need to look at that very carefully. Now, I know, I know, I know, mass on a Saturday morning <laughs> is not a good idea, but please do this analysis on all the different income streams that you have. 50% plus is healthy. And remember your GP, your gross profit, that is the money that's used to cover your fixed costs. So your fixed monthly costs, you know, um, they are whatever it is, 35,000 a month or 40,000 a month or whatever it is. Remember, you've got to include your debt repayments within that as well. So you've got to make enough gross profit to cover those fixed costs. And then hopefully there's going to be a net, net, net profit after that, but we'll go into your savings. So I think this is why online work at the moment is so attractive because your cost of sale is so low and your gross percentage, your gross profit margins are very, very high. And more and more people are becoming uh, what Ken and I are. We are digital nomads. That, that's what we are. Um, so talking about incomes, it's also very important to understand the difference between active income and recurring income. And this is critical. So I just I had a picture here, I asked Sarah just to give me a picture. Sarah Jones, uh, my niece has just been fantastic putting all of this um, 
uh, advertising campaign together and helping with this presentation. Thank you so much, Sarah. And uh, yeah, she's just been offered a dream job, uh, being a manageress for an eco lodge in Tanzania. So congratulations, Sarah. Um, and yeah, she, she is going to be earning good money, but what's really great is her cost of work will be quite low because they will be supplying her with accommodation and meals, et cetera, et cetera. So very, very good solution for her. Uh, so the bucket, really, this is where, uh, you know, if you're talking about active income, you're trading your time for money. So it's almost like, you know, I'm, I'm carrying buckets of water every day to supply water for my household. Um, but recurring money is where you've actually taken the time to invest in building a pipeline so that all you've got to do is turn the tap and the money is just coming and it's 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 coming. And, it's coming and, it's coming and every single month that money is just coming. And that's the kind of money that you probably get from having multiple businesses or multiple properties or royalty fees or license fees, um, et cetera. So you may well be sitting on some IP, some intellectual property that has value, and you could actually license that um, and make that available. So it's always important Yes, you need active money because your active money is giving you money today, but you constantly thinking about tomorrow and you want to have that money coming in tomorrow so that you can get ahead of the game. Because at some stage you do want to sit on the beach um, and actually enjoy your life. Um, you don't necessarily have to sit on the beach, but being able to have the time freedom to do what it is that you really want to do. So definitely consider that when you're looking at different income streams. So it's all about freedom at the end of the day. That's what we're looking for. And getting in, in, getting in charge of your money and getting in charge of your income streams is leading towards, leading towards that place where you are feeling completely free. So let's wrap up this session talking about other income opportunities that you can do. A very popular one, and we love this, is selling other people's services. Um, our affiliate trainers, they do this all the time, they network between each other. Sometimes there may be a job that's too big for the capacity of one affiliate trainer. They rope in maybe a couple of other affiliates to assist them and they pay them. Um, there's a referral fee interaction there and they discuss what that is. Typically a referral fee is, is at least 10%. Um, and you definitely can expand uh, your income streams by adding that. And it's a great one because you're, you are probably not doing the work. Someone else is actually doing the work, but you are getting that small income uh, coming in each time that you're referring, referring that business to them. Um, another fantastic way to make money is trading and selling, buying low and selling high. Um, and at one stage, Ken and I, we, we had a lot of financial difficulties, I think after 2008 and the, the big crash, we had a lot of contracts that were canceled and things like that. And we really needed to make money fast. And we, we literally used um, one of our businesses, one Amway business, and we were uh, buying our Amway products and selling them at a profit. And we, we put cash on the table literally by doing that. And so find something that you want to sell and that you're passionate about um, and that you can feel enthusiastic enough about to sell. And I want to just, um, at this stage, I'm going to hand back to Andre and ask him, you know, maybe just to add something um, or other at this stage, uh, just to uh, give us some more ideas about other ways of creating income. There are so many you can Google um, and we'll definitely give you a lot more information on the workshop on the 31st of July. But with that, I'm gonna hand back to Andre. Andre. You know, Penny, I, you, you reminded me of so many positive things. I remember the eight bedroom house and all that cost you a lot of money. We all loved it. <laughs> and so I'm pretty sure we can enjoy your lovely big house in Mauritius as well. Yes, absolutely. Last year, on March the 26th, literally, I lost a year's worth of work in literally 48 hours. And you have to sometimes recreate yourself. And in these times, I think many of us are in the situation of having to recreate yourself. So here's just a couple of things that I'm aware of and a couple of things that I did. The first thing is, is that I suddenly realized I don't have to deal in South Africa. I can start dealing with people overseas. So one of the things that I do is I'm a professional voice coach. And one of the things I could do is sell my course internationally for exactly the same number, except one of them was in dollars. And so that was an enormously beneficial thing. I could still do presentations if I did them online. And last year I did over 85 presentations. But for the very first time in my life, and Ken will appreciate this, 
is I managed to get jobs in London with places like the London Stock Exchange and the London Chamber of Commerce, which again was additional income that I've never had. Penny affiliate marketing in my life is absolutely enormous. I have a big network and the more people that you know, and I want to encourage you to times when times are tough, not to hide away. These are the very moments that you have to go and affiliate marketing is as simple as my neighbor's selling a house. I phone my local friendly agent and say, if I give you some details, will you pay me some money? And most of them will pay you somewhere between 10 and 20%. And you can make last year or two years ago, I made nearly 200,000 Rand just on telling agents of properties that I was aware of that were selling. Online has become huge. My daughter is fascinating. I'm at that age now where I'm having a little bit of difficulty understanding it, but she's literally taking my old clothes and other people's old clothes and going to places like hospices and, and, and old age homes and fates and buying stuff, as you say, buy low penny and selling high. What an amazing opportunity. So very often I see the other day she went and she bought a whole lot of bags uh, at one rand each at one of these fates and then started selling them at 70 or 80 rand. So there are multiple opportunities. But there are a couple of things that we need you to do. So the first thing is, is that if you want to do the whole course with all 10 different sessions, as we said today, we've done debt and we've done side hustles. We can expand on that. Uh, next week, we're going to talk about tax. Did you know that all the billionaires in America, and there are about 1,500 of them, pay 3% tax? Do you think it would make a huge difference in your life? So we, if you want to find out a little bit more of these things, we've got two things. The first one is on the 17th of July, we've got another free session. But as you know, Poppy's kicked in and we can't do contact you unless we've got your details. So literally from the 1st of July, we can't contact you. So unless you're on my social media or Penny's social media, what we're going to ask you to do is to just WhatsApp this number, 082-920-8170. That's Penny. Penny's not going to abuse your cell phone number. It just enables us to send you the invite to the free session next time. And obviously, we're going to invite you to the course at the end of, or end of the month as well. All right. So if you've got any thoughts or any comments you'd like to do, please put them onto the chat line. Uh, this, is, this has been recorded, so obviously we're going to try and do that. Uh, we can book your tickets on Quicket. All right. So if you go to Quicket and you type in Master Your Money, you'll be able to find the, the, the tickets for the end of the month. Uh, and follow Money, Money Penny on Miss Money Penny Course or on Instagram on Money underscore Penny underscore George. Jones, sorry, George, which is with Jones. <laughs> Penny, well done. You, you're absolutely brilliant. In 30 minutes, you have managed to give me so much information. I have an entire page full of that. Um, I can't imagine what you're going to do if you're going to cover 10 different topics. But what I would like to finish off with before I hand back to you, Penny, is I want to encourage you to say that I know a couple of quick things. I'm a motivator. It's my heart. I'm an encourager. I want to say to you is that be kind to yourself. These are tough times and I want you to be gentle and I want you to feed yourself well, sleep well. Fear does nothing except paralyze you. The second thing I want to encourage you is to declutter. Make your life simple. Go into those cupboards and start flogging the things off. Have a, a garage sale or, a, or an outside sale and sell off all your junk and allow space for the good things to come back in your life. And then lastly, just start thinking a little bit about what could I do? What skills do I have that can absolutely change my life? I want to encourage you. Yesterday, I had lunch with a guy. And here's an interesting thing. Last month in Cape Town, one company sold 1 billion rands with a property. And the average price was a million rand a unit. They sold 1,000 units last month. There is a lot of money out there. Make sure that you're getting your share. Penny, over to you. Thank you guys for giving us some of your Saturday morning. I hope that you found some value somewhere. If I've just told you one thing, because I'm sure you probably know all of this, but if I just shared one thing with you that's going to make a difference to you, then I am so, so happy. We really want your comments. So please, uh, a penny for your thoughts. Please uh, WhatsApp us your comments and feedback. We really, really value that. And we hope as many of you as possible will be able to join us on the 17th of July. Um, and that's also going to be free. So please, if you feel it had, had value for you, maybe it has value for someone else that you know that's really suffering at the moment, um, or even if they're not suffering, but they just want to like upgrade their um, understandings maybe, or just get a different perspective, a fresh perspective. Um, this is like, uh, this is not kind of like, 
the emotional side of money or whatever this is just like the clear things that you need to put in place and these are the minimums these are the minimums that you need to have in place um to make sure that you are financially secure and financially independent so from me goodbye and god bless and uh, hope to see you again soon thank you so much for being with us yeah keep safe thank you for all your lovely comments thanks guys it's really really appreciated um, I know Penny has done an enormous amount of work, but it's taken a lot of work to just get this up and going uh, in the middle of a pandemic. So all I want to say to you is keep warm, stay safe, and we'll hopefully see you all on the 17th of July. I think it's going to be an absolute blast. Thanks, everyone. We'll chat to you later. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.